Let's have a look. Question number six. You're ten away from a million. Here we go. Have a look. What type of fruit is a russet? Banana. Orange. Apple. Pineapple. I think I'll have an apple, please, Chris. Sure. <laughs> Definitely. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got two thousand pounds. Good man. And you still got those three lifelines. You're now nine away from a million. You're four away from that serious next big milestone of 32,000. Have a look, Greg. Question number seven for 4,000 pounds. Here we go. Which member of the royal family appeared in the live 40th anniversary episode of Coronation Street? Not allowed to watch it, are you? Um, Prince William. Prince Philip. Prince Harry. Prince Charles. You know you watched it. Don't put that face on. <laughs> I know you're supposed to be watching EastEnders. You know you watched it. Well, because I watch it a lot, I'm going to ask the audience. On Ooh. OK, audience on your keypads, please. This is worth £4,000. This is the question. Which member of the royal family appeared in the live 40th anniversary episode of Coronation Street? A, B, C or D. All vote now. Uh, that's quite high. <laughs> I did wonder about the 2%, but I think I'll stick with the audience and go for Prince Charles. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got 4,000 pounds. <laughs> the idea of Prince Philip chatting to Audrey. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> you got four thousand pounds. Now have a look at question number eight of a possible fifteen. Who is the stepsister of singer Lorna Luft? The stepsister of singer Lorna Luft. Liza Minnelli. Doris Day. Diana Ross. Cher. Nasty little thing, wasn't it? That's a really good one. <laughs> the well, good ones are ones you know. Exactly. Um, Stepsister of singer Lorna Luff. Uh, well, first thing, I'll, t I'll play the 50 50, please, Chris. OK. Computer, take away two wrong answers. Leave Greg the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. <laughs> that helped? <laughs> what about 50%? <laughs> yes. Uh, it's worth £8,000. Right. I'm going to call... I'd like to phone a friend, please. And I'd like to call... Kitty. Who? Kitty. Kitty? Kitty who? Kitty. Who's Kitty? Kitty. Uh, she's actually Elizabeth's daughter. And a great friend. OK, we're in Kitty. Where is Kitty? Yeah, yeah, Kitty, Kitty, where's Kitty? <laughs> Sorry, where is Kitty? Where Kitty, Kitty? <laughs> where is Kitty? <laughs> Probably in the backyard right now. No, um, she's um, Liz up near Nottingham, Hello? I think. Kitty. Hello. Hiya, it's Chris Tarrant here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Hiya, how are Hiya. you? Uh, I've got Greg here. Oh, all right. He's on £4,000. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow, but with your help, wow, wow and double wow, we get him up to £8,000. <laughs> all right, Kitty, totally now the question has only got two possible answers left. Right. One of them is the right answer worth 8,000, the other one will cost him 3,000 pounds. Okay. Okay, next voice you hear will be Greg's 30 seconds to tell you the question, the two possible answers. Okay, then. Okay, Kitty. Okay, lots of luck. Okay, okay. Greg, your time starts now. Hi, Kitty. Hello. Who is the stepsister of singer Lorna Luft? Liza Minnelli or Cher? Right, um, I'm not actually 100% sure on that, Greg. Um, I suspect it's Liza Minnelli, but I'm not 100%. Thanks, Kitty. Okay. okay. Good luck. You don't have to play this. Um, you got four thousand. If you give me a wrong answer, you lose three thousand. It would be nice to gamble, but I'm not going to gamble because three thousand is three thousand, um, and. If she's not 100%, I, you know, I made some rules when I came in and I said, no, 
I'm going to I'm going to take the money, Chris. Final answer. Final answer. Taking four thousand pounds back to the people. Four thousand pounds. Okay, give him a big hand. He goes away with four thousand pounds. Just before you go. Just before you disappear, I can tell you, if you had gone along with here, kitty kitty, if you had gone along with Liza Minnelli, you would now not be on £4,000 at all. You'd now be on £8,000. It was the right answer. <laughs> Let's meet our brand new ten contestants. They are <laughs> Caroline Gould from Worcestershire, Harry Whitby from Edinburgh, <laughs> Valerie Shipley from Tyne and Weir, <laughs> Paul Lee from Berkshire, <laughs> Tom Davis from Essex, <laughs> Michael Cashmore from Devon, <laughs> Jonathan Hughes from Hertfordshire, <laughs> Ian Finn from Oxfordshire. Jackie Goff from Dorset and Carol Romero from Cumbria. Right, that's your ten contestants tonight. Fastest finger first, then. Whoever puts the four answers in the correct order in the fastest order is next tonight. The play for a possible one million pounds. Nice and quiet in the audience. Keep it zipped. Fastest finger first. Here comes the question. Starting with the earliest, put these historical figures in the order they were born. So, four historical figures coming up. We want the one farthest back in time coming towards the present day. Starting with the earliest, here they are. Winston Churchill, Julius Caesar, Napoleon Bonaparte, Oliver Cromwell. OK, then, the right order, starting with the earliest. Uh, Julius Caesar, born back approximately 100 BC. Then it was Oliver Cromwell, 1599. Napoleon Bonaparte, 1769. And the most recent, Winston Churchill in 1874. Now, that's the right order. Uh, see how many of our ten got it right? These got it right. Uh, quite a few. Who was fastest? Uh, Paul Lee in 5.09 seconds. That's very quick, Paul. Well done. I am very pleased. Play for a million pounds. Yes, please. Oh, come on. So here we go again. This is Paul Lee, a freelance medical advisor and aspiring musical theatre lyricist from Maidenhead. Up in the audience, fiance Margaret watching at home are the kids Naomi, Stephanie, George, and Edwina. Uh, Paul says that when he was thinking about being in the hot seat, he alternated from ridiculous confidence to deep, deep depression. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret's advice to Paul tonight is don't be cocky and rush in too quickly, so Paul has promised that before he answers any questions, he'll count to ten. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. see how long that lasts. <laughs> um, if you win a million pounds, <clears throat> you say that you'd like to um, have Catherine Zeta-Jones singing the lyrics to a musical that you'd written. That'd be very nice, yes. So what is it about Catherine Zeta-Jones's musical skills, then? She's got a very good voice, Chris. Has she? Yeah, very good. She started off in musical theatre. Will she be wearing a bikini? Uh, depends on the musical. I'll have to write one set in the modern day, I, I guess. I think most yeah. people would. What would be, um... I mean, truthfully, Paul, what would be a very handy amount of money for your family? Um... Well, as I say, 32 would, would be nice. More would be better, um, but... Anything would be good. So, I mean, it's, it's good to be here. So I'm... Anything at all. Really. Anything at all. Yeah, don't I'm be not... too cocky. I, I won't. A count to ten. A count to ten. OK. Fifteen questions, one million pounds, three brand new lifelines, 50-50. Phone a friend and ask the audience. OK, Paul, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> Question number one, then, is worth 100 pounds. Here it comes. Which of these is a type of shooting target? Clay pigeon. Terracotta grouse, china pheasant, porcelain partridge. One, Don't be too cocky. Two, uh, <laughs> <laughs> clay a clay pigeon. It's going to be a very long show if you do that for all 15 questions. It's the right answer, you've got £100. <laughs> OK, you can go at any point you want, but you've got all three lifelines. Have a look at question number two, it's worth 200 quid. Here it comes. For which of these activities is a bikini <laughs> most likely to be worn? A, being Catherine Zeta-Jones. Yes. Um, let's see. Walking the dog, swimming, ice skating, playing football. Uh, I 
think that's swimming. I think you'll find it swimming. It's the right answer. You've got £200. <laughs> Have a look, question number three for 300 quid. Here it comes. Which phrase can mean a place known for its scenery or a mole on a woman's face? Prettiness area. Beauty spot. Charm place. Glamour site. Beauty spot. Right answer, no problem at all. So far, you've got 300 pounds. So Catherine will be sitting at home salivating at the prospect. <laughs> now, you've got all three lifelines left. Next question is for £500. Two more points at which you could go home with nothing, Paul. I'm sure it won't happen. You've got all three lifelines if you need them. Question number four is for £500. Here it is. Traditionally, what does a draper sell? Wine. Furniture. Vegetables. Cloth. I think it's cloth, Chris. It's the right answer, Paul. £500. <laughs> Right, OK, you've got 500 quid. Have a look. Last point, Paul, at which you could go home with nothing. I'm sure it won't happen. You've got all three lifelines. Use them if you have to. Question number five for £1,000. Sabutio is a tabletop version of which game? Darts. Billiards. Football. Tennis. It's football, Chris. Right answer, you've got £1,000. Good on, Paul. Is it true if you get enough money, you're going to buy Margaret her own knitting machine? Absolutely. <laughs> you're a bit of a big spender, aren't I'd, you, I'd, Anything. <laughs> Show a girl anything a good time. Anything from Margaret. <laughs> buy her a knitting machine. <laughs> Not like buy her a jumper. <laughs> buy her a knitting, <laughs> a knitting machine. machine. And wool? Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> a bit of a cheapskate, Paul, if I may say so. <laughs> OK, you've got £1,000. Have a look at question number six. Here it is. Which tree provides the staple diet of a koala? Bamboo. Macadamia. Palm. Eucalyptus. Bamboo is the panda, so it is eucalyptus, I think. Not being cocky, are you? I hope not. Final answer? Final answer, eucalyptus. You just won £2,000. <laughs> Are you feeling ridiculously confident or deeply depressed? Uh, ridiculously somewhere depressed. in between. Somewhere in between. Okay. Have a look. Question number seven's worth four thousand. Money's starting to go up quite steeply. The drops get a bit steep as well. Um, you've got all three lifelines. You haven't needed any yet. You're nine away from a possible million pounds. This is for four thousand. Here it comes. Who wrote the music for the ballet, The Sleeping Beauty? Tchaikovsky, Rossini, Stravinsky, Vivaldi. Don't have to count to ten with this one, it's Tchaikovsky. How do you know? Because I've got it at home. Not Tchaikovsky. You've got, you've got but, it at home. <laughs> not, not, not the actual <laughs> composer, but the, uh, the work. It's Tchaikovsky. Final answer. Final answer. It's good. You've got £4,000. <laughs> So at what point would you buy, a, you know, a ball of wool then? Oh, we're getting, I'm intrigued we're, by this. We're, we're getting close. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're in the neighbourhood. <laughs> Wool's a bit expensive these days, isn't it? OK, have a look at question number eight. It's worth 8,000. Which of these novels was written by Daphne du Maurier? Emma, Emily, Rebecca, Heidi. It's Rebecca, Chris. Didn't count then. I did count under my breath. Very quickly. Well, a fast count. <laughs> Final answer. <laughs> Final answer. So right answer. You got eight thousand. <laughs> now come on, buy a ball of wool. Come All on. Right. Thank you. Right. Okay. Done. Good work, Margaret. Got a ball of wool and a knitting machine. <laughs> you still got all three lifelines. You haven't used any lifelines yet. You can ask the audience. You can phone a friend. You can use 50-50. This is for £16,000. Paul, you would lose £7,000 if you gave me a wrong answer. So take your time. Have a good look at this. Question number nine of a possible 15. Which TV comedy was first seen in October 1969? Dad's Army. 
Monty Python's Flying Circus, Fawlty Towers, Steptoe and Son. Oh dear. Um, Could have been any of them, couldn't it? Could be any of them. <clears throat> Fifty-fifty. You can phone a friend. You can ask the audience. I'll ask the audience, Chris. Okay, audience on your keypads, please. They'll be pleased. Um, no pressure. It's worth sixteen thousand pounds. This is the question: Which TV comedy was first seen in October nineteen sixty-nine? A, B, C, or D? All vote now. Mm, very scattered. Um, 42% majority uh, saying Steptoe and Son, 13% Fawlty Towers, 21% Monty Python, 24% Dad's Army. That probably hasn't helped you hugely, has it? Not much. Well, I was 16 in 69. I th don't think Monty Python's Flying Circus was on then. Maybe it was, actually. Maybe it was. What are you thinking? I thought originally Steptoe and Son, I have to say. I don't want to lose £7,000. Uh, you got 50 50? Definitely not Faulty Towers. Why? So that was later. I'm sure it was later. OK, now you've got 8000 You've got a 50 50 there if you want it. You can phone a friend. I'll go 50 50. OK, computer, take away two wrong answers. Leave Paul the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Yes, well done, 42% of the audience. Thank you. <laughs> well, it, it's Monty Python's Flying Circus. Not Faulty Towers? No, definitely not. Final answer? Yeah, Monty Python's Flying Circus. You sure it's not Faulty Towers? Pretty sure. But I'm not <laughs> supremely confident in that. You're not very cocky at the moment, are you? No. You should be, you just won £16,000. <laughs> OK, you got 16000 How are you feeling now? Less confident. <laughs> Listen, you can walk away with £16,000, a lot of money. You still phone a friend, if you need to. Question number 10 is worth £32,000. If you give me a right answer, Paul, I'd be delighted to give you a cheque on the spot. OK, have a look. This is question number 10 of a possible 15. You're six away from a million. Here it is. In which county is the port of Felixstowe? Essex, Norfolk, Lincolnshire, Suffolk. It's Suffolk, Chris. How do you know? Because I do. <laughs> Sounds a bit cocky to me, Paul. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> just I, a hint I'm of cocky. Yes, a hint just... Not much counting went on. I think got to one and went Suffolk. Guys, I'm positive it's Suffolk. I just wonder where this cockiness has come back. Final answer. Final answer, Suffolk. <laughs> You've just won £32,000. <laughs> well done, Paul Lee. <laughs> oh, Catherine Zeta Jones will be in such a lava of excitement. Uh, you got £32,000. Whatever happens, you go home with at least that amount of money. Take it. No. Nope. I mean, no. Don't want to touch it. Can I keep it? Superstition. It Superstition. Really? Yeah. But it's yours, whatever happens. Thank you know you. you go home with that amount of money. We don't want to give you that. <laughs> we'll give you that no matter what, but you might go home with a lot more. Uh, you're five questions away from a possible million, and you've still got to phone a friend. Right. How are you feeling? You're guaranteed £32,000. Getting more nervous now. <laughs> OK, have a look at question number 11. Now, Paul, you might as well play this. You can use your lifeline if you need to, whatever. You can't lose on this one. You've got £32,000, a nice situation to be in. You're guaranteed going home with that amount of money tonight to the family, but it's worth 64000 You might as well play it. Have a look at question number 11 of a possible 15. Which gas is the main constituent of the atmosphere on Mars? Methane, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, helium. Now, what are you thinking? I'm thinking it's between methane and carbon dioxide. It's certainly not helium. And I'm 
Why not? It's too light, I guess. And I'm pretty sure it's not nitrogen. And I don't want to phone a friend at this stage. And I'm not sure they'd know anyway. Depends who you phone. Yeah. Patrick Moore, he'd be handy. <laughs> It's your call, Paul. I mean, obviously, if you go away, leaving a lifeline behind it would be a shame, but uh, it's up to you. If your, friends, if your friends might not know, it might be worth saving it. Have a look at it. Uh, it's worth £64,000. You're guaranteed £32,000. You have got one lifeline if you need it. Which gas is the main constituent of the atmosphere on Mars? Methane, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, helium. It's worth £64,000. I'll go for methane. It's worth £64,000. No, I'm going to stick with methane. Final answer. Final answer. Paul. It's the wrong answer. I'm really sorry, and carbon dioxide was the right one. Never mind. Hey, you were very good tonight, you were very good. You weren't too cocky, you were good, very good. He goes away with £32,000. Good on, mate. <laughs> now, we've still got nine contestants left. Fastest finger first again, keep it zipped. Here comes the next question. Put these supermarket products in alphabetical order. Mayonnaise, margarine, macaroni, marmalade. I tell you what, they always look very easy at home, those ones. Uh, at speed, they're really hard. Let's see, then. The right order. Uh, fairly, um, fairly obviously, macaroni first, M-A-C. Then it's margarine, M-A-R-G. Then it's marmalade. And then finally, of course, mayonnaise. That's the right order. Now, how many of our remaining nine got it right? Probably not all of them. It is all of them. Well done. Now, who was fastest? Jonathan Hughes in 6.37. Well done, Jonathan. <laughs> well done, Jonathan. So this is Jonathan Hughes, an accountant from Bishop Stortford in Hertfordshire. Up in the audience there is his wife Fiona, looking um, absolutely terrified. <laughs> Jonathan would like to dispel the myth that accountants are boring, because he says when he was in training he went to the pub every night and drank orange juice. If he won a lot of money, he says he'd like to chill out in Tahiti in a bungalow on stilts by a lagoon where he can sip champers to his heart's content. He says ideally he'd go with Fiona, but he'd have Jennifer Lopez on standby just in case Fiona can't get time off work. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, you'd have to answer to Puff Daddy on this as well, Jonathan. Yes. But ideally Fiona, but if not, Jennifer Lopez. Right, in your dreams. OK, well, you do say uh, you're just here for the experience. And I hope it's a nice experience. You so say, if you get it, a question wrong, uh, you won't worry about it the rest of your life, and you won't kick yourself the rest of your life. You just enjoy it. No, Fiona will kick me instead. <laughs> <laughs> now, 15 questions, £1 million, three brand new lifelines, 50 50, phone a friend and ask the audience all over again. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, Jonathan, for £100, question number one of a possible 15. Here we go, have a look. Which of these is a type of knitted garment? It's a knitting night tonight. Which of these is a type of knitted garment? Push over. Pull over. Knock over. Fall over. I wonder where we're going for a second. Fall over. <laughs> I think that's pull over. It's the right answer. You've got £100. <laughs> OK, question number two for £200. Usually very straightforward. Just be aware on these early ones, up to 1000 If you gave me a wrong answer, you would go home with nothing at all. That's why you've got those lifelines. Question number two for 200 quid, here it is. Which of these is an unofficial vote to discover the likely result of an election? Oats poll, straw poll, hay poll, barley poll. 
straw poll. Right answer, you've got £200. <laughs> Uh, you got £200. Have a look at question number three for 300 quid. Here it is. Which of these is a major character in the children's book The Wind in the Willows? Salamander. Giraffe. Crocodile. Toad. Toad. Not giraffe. No, def <laughs> definitely toad. <laughs> so, right answer, you got 300 quid. <laughs> Have a look at Fiona. Oh, she's looking slightly less nervous. Okay. Uh, Question four for £500. Two more before you're guaranteed a 1000 Have a look at this one. Four of a possible 15. You're 12 away from a million. Here we go. Which of these singular nouns remains the same in its plural form? Tooth. Mouse. Child. Sheep. Sheep. It's right answer. You've got 500 quid. <laughs> One of those that, uh, questions that actually sounds a lot harder than it is when you see the possibilities come up on the screen. Right, Jonathan, last point at which you could go home with nothing. I'm sure it won't happen. This is worth £1,000. Question number five. Here it is. Which of these catchphrases featured in the TV sitcom Are You Being Served? Didn't he do well? Shut that door. How tickled I am. Or I'm free. I'm free. Final answer. Yeah. It's right, you've got a thousand pounds. Come on. <laughs> Phrase said by uh, Mr. Humphreys, played by John Hinman. Now, you've got a thousand pounds. Have a look at question number six for two thousand pounds. You've got all those lifelines, you're ten away from a million. Here it comes. Where in the body is the pituitary gland? Heart. <laughs> Brain, kidney, liver. I think it's brain. Sure? Yeah, final answer. You just won £2,000. <laughs> and you've hung on to those lifelines, well done. OK, question number seven. Money now starting to go up a bit steeply. Uh, question number seven is worth £4,000. You can double your money if you give me the right answer. Have a look at question number seven. You've got all three lifelines left still. The city of Cologne stands on which river? Rhine. Danube. Oder. Maine. It's worth £4,000 to you. You've got £2,000. Uh, you can use 50-50, phone a friend, or ask the audience. I'll phone James. James? OK. Who's he? He's a friend. Where, where's James? Uh, in London. OK. Give him a call. Uh, 30 seconds, tell him the possibilities. Right. You don't have to take his answer. You can still use another lifeline if you want to. James? Yes. Hi, it's Chris Darren here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Um, I've got Jonathan here. Okay. Jonathan Hughes is on £2,000 at the moment. With your help, James, we can get him up to 4000 OK. OK, right. <laughs> the question coming up has got four possible answers. One of them is the right answer, three are wrong. OK. OK, next voice you hear will be Jonathan's. He'll have 30 seconds, hopefully, to give him the right answer. OK. Lots of luck. Time starts now, Jonathan. Here we go. Hi. The, Hi. City, the city of Cologne stands on which river? Rhine, Danube... Oder, O-D-E-R, or Main, M-A-I-N. I think it's the Rhine, but I'm not that sure, I'm afraid. Um, uh, sorry, Jonathan, I'm, I think it's the Rhine, but I can't, can't swear to that. OK, thanks. I mean, is he all right, James? It's normally pretty good, actually. Um... Up to you. You've got 2,000. Um, you've still got two more lifelines. What are you thinking? 
he can he's pretty good, actually. He's pretty good. Um, I'll, trust him. Yeah, I'll lose, trust uh, him. Lose a thousand pounds if he's wrong. You've got a thousand guarantee. I'll play Ryan. I'll go for Ryan. Final answer. Yeah. On James, you say so. Yeah. He's very good, James. He's just won you £4,000. You still get 50-50, and you can still ask this audience, 42% of whom last time they were asked were completely wrong. Um, right, have a look at question eight. That's eight away from a possible million. Here we go. Phil Collins' song, You'll Be In My Heart, features in which Disney film? The Lion King, Mulan, Tarzan, Aladdin. I'm going to ask the audience. OK. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. This is worth £8,000. Uh, this is the question. Phil Collins' song, You'll Be In My Heart, features in which Disney film? A, on your keypad, it'll be The Lion King. B, it'll be Mulan. C, is Tarzan. D, is Aladdin. All vote now. Um, 63% say Tarzan. It's quite high. Uh, 14, Lion King. Uh, 10 Mulan, 13 Aladdin. Uh, you got £4,000, you lose three if you give me a wrong answer. It's worth eight. And that's good enough for me, 63%. Is it? I'll go for Tarzan. These people? <laughs> that's all right, is it? I'll give him another chance. Final answer, going for Tarzan. Yeah, yeah. It's the right answer, you got £8,000. <laughs> They're all clapping wildly out of sheer relief. Nothing to do with you. They're just terribly <laughs> pleased with themselves. Right, you've got £8,000. Now, you've still got a 50-50. You're two away from the next big milestone of £32,000. This is for 16000 But, John, the drops get a bit steeper. You'd lose £7,000. Well, I shouldn't have to tell you this. You're an accountant. But uh, you've got £8,000. You would lose seven here if you gave me a wrong answer. Have a look at question number nine. Which of these metals is not an element? Not an element. Brass. Copper. Magnesium. Zinc. I think it's brass because it's an alloy and all the others are elements. So I'll say brass. Confident? Um, only moderately. I, I think it's probably brass. Final answer? Uh, yeah. It's good. You just won £16,000. <laughs> Have a look at question number 10. It's worth £32,000. Miss World 1999 and Miss World 2000 both represented which country? Austria, India, Sweden, Venezuela. I think I know this. It's India. Watch it. No. <laughs> It's up to you. Yeah, definitely play India. Confident? Yeah. What was she like then, Miss World 2000 from India, you think? <sighs> Dark hair, probably. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she probably would have been, yeah. wouldn't she? Yeah. Final answer. I'm sure she's lovely. She looked like Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> she looked like Fiona, more important. <laughs> Want to play? Final answer. Yeah. You've just won £32,000. <laughs> Well done, Jonathan. <laughs> and all from your knowledge of scantily clad women. <laughs> well done, £32,000. Whatever happens, you go home with at least that. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> the accountant's fingers come racing in. Whatever happens, you go home with at least that amount of money. You can take it if you want. Put it in your pocket. Thank you. Put it up there. <laughs> OK? Invest it. You've got £32,000. You've still got a 50 50. Um, you're five away from a possible million. Next question is worth £64,000, which is exactly where we were with Paul uh, about 20 minutes ago. Have a look at number 11. You might as well play this. You can't lose. You're guaranteed to go home with at least £32,000. You've still got that 50-50. You're five away from a million. This is for £64,000. On which date 
is Canada's National Day. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Ah, so sort of hysteria, <laughs> I see. Yeah. <laughs> OK, on which date is Canada's National Day? You've got a 50-50 if you need it. It's worth 64,000. You might as well play this. Yeah. January the 1st. April the 1st. July the 1st. October the 1st. Uh, well, I'll use that my 50-50. OK, computer take away two wrong answers. Leave Jonathan the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. You're still done the words, right? One of those will bring you £64,000. Probably in October, it'll be a bit cold in Canada, so I'll go for July. Because it would be cold in yeah. October. Yeah. <laughs> but they'll stay indoors, don't they, after, yeah. after September? No, I'll go you for July. You might stay indoors celebrating National Day <laughs> indoors with the last big fire. It's up to you. Yeah, I'll go for July. Final answer. Yeah. You're absolutely right, it is July the 1st. <laughs> and you had an extra way. You knew nothing. I am from Bishop Scott, but I know nothing. It's the right answer. I'm not quite sure how you got there. You're not sure how you got there. You got £64,000. You know that cheque you have for £32,000? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Just put that there. It's whatever happens, you go away with that. You know you guarantee that. At this moment, you could walk away with that. OK? You want to take that one? Yep. Thank you. Yep. You get the taste <laughs> for these checks, haven't you? OK, £64,000 you've got at this moment. This is for 125000 Now, at this point, you would lose 32000 if you gave me a wrong answer. You're four away from a possible one million. Have a look at question number 12 of a possible 15. Who wrote the novel East of Eden? Do you think you know this? I think so, yeah. I think it is. Steinbeck. <laughs> F. Scott Fitzgerald, Robert Benchley, Ernest Hemingway, John Steinbeck. Yeah, I'll go for D. You lose 32,000 if you're wrong. Final answer. Yeah. Have you read it? You've got it at home? No, I haven't read it, no, I haven't read it. Such a check for £64,000. You don't need that anymore, you just won £120,000. <laughs> Have a look at that one. £125,000. But we don't want to give you that. I tell you what, I will give you that. Put it in your pocket. Thank you. Go on, because they seem to settle in your pocket rather nicely. <laughs> Serious money. You've got no lifelines left, but the next question is worth a quarter of a million. You guarantee 32,000, you've got a cheque there for 125, but this is question number 13 of a possible 15. It's worth 250,000 pounds. Good luck, have a look at it. Which of these people would be particularly interested in a miller's thumb? Butterfly collector, gardener, Ornithologist, angler, it's worth a quarter of a million. No, I don't have a clue, I'm afraid. Take your time, it's worth 250,000. You got any you don't think it is? No, I'm not. I'm probably not an ornithologist, but there again, it might be. No, I'm not sure at all. I don't think any of them are uh, completely impossible. What would you say if you had a guess? You don't have to, you've got 125 grand. Uh, I'll probably say angler, I don't know why, but I'm, I'm not sure at all. If, if I had to guess, I'd say angler. Final answer. But I'm, I'm going to stick with uh, what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> Give a big hand. He goes away with £125,000. Let's have a look at it. Have one last little look. 
He goes away with that amount of money. He goes away with £125,000. You can take it now. I can tell you, if you had said to me, butterfly collector, he'd have lost £93,000. If you said to me, gardener, he'd have lost £93,000. If you'd said to me, ornithologist, he'd have lost £93,000. <laughs> The right answer, and I have to say, I knew it as soon as it came up, because I do that, is Angler. You still go away with £125,000. Well played, mate. Have a great start to 2001. Well done. Jonathan Hughes goes back to Bishop's store with £125,000 and Miller's thumb is a tiny little fish. Now, we've got eight players left. Fast finger first time again, audience nice and quiet, please. Here comes the next question. Starting with the earliest, put these countries in the order they hosted the last four Olympic Games. South Korea, USA, Australia, Spain. OK, let's see then the right order. Four host countries, starting with the earliest. These all hosted the Olympics. Uh, first one, uh, Seoul at South Korea back in uh, 1988. Uh, then it was Spain-Barcelona in 92. Then it was the USA and Atlanta in 96. And Australia, of course, great Olympic Games in Sydney in 2000. That's the right order. Now, how many of them got it right? Eight are left. All these got it right. Only one. Tom Davis in 10.66 seconds. <laughs> Okay, busy old night tonight. This is Tom Davis, a systems supervisor from Rentwood in Essex. Up there in the audience is his mate Steve, and watching at home is his partner Katie. Tom says that ever since he heard he was going to be on the show tonight, he hasn't stopped shaking. That's correct. All right, you're shaking now? Yes, I'm very, very nervous. Oh, yeah. Now you'll be okay. We're, we're very close to the end of the show. Fingers crossed tonight. 15 questions, okay? £1 million, three brand new lifelines. He's got 50 50. He's got phone a friend, and he can ask this audience. Okay, Tom? Yes. Lots of luck. Let's hopefully win you lots of money. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> 